we received Megan's diagnosis probably about nine months of age. They told us it was a very serious disease. They told us it was a fatal disease. And we got the call a couple of days afterwards that Patrick, who was only seven days old, also had Pompeii disease. So within the span of those first couple of months, we learned we had two kids who probably wouldn't live to be two. Pompeii is a rare genetic disease. The kids, because of their genetic defect, they can't break down sugar. If you were diagnosed with Pompeii disease, absent a treatment, you will die from your disease. Megan got profoundly sick. She had to go on a ventilator. She was in the hospital for six weeks. Her heart stopped three times in those six weeks. But she is a tough little kid. I remember looking at Megan and, and into those big brown eyes of hers, and she was scanning the room, and she kind of locked on to, to me, and then she locked on to Eileen. And, uh, you know, I think those little eyes, you know, they, they told us a lot. And I think they told us that she didn't want to quit, that she wanted to fight. And I think from that moment on, we both knew she wanted to fight, so we would too. We grew increasingly frustrated with the pace of research, with always seeming like we were out of the loop. And eventually, out of desperation, Eileen and I decided that we'd try to help take the lead in the, the quest for treatment or cure. And I went in the next day and told my boss that I'm gonna step away from a secure job and you know the, the pay and the stability for us, the health insurance, all of that, and take a chance on starting a business. I had a lot of confidence in John, and I knew that if he was comfortable and had done the research and had done the homework and knew he could do this, I just needed to give him my full support. I had very, very limited experience uh, in the medical world, and there were tough times. There were times where we were frustrated, times where the kids were so very sick, and times we just wanted to let nature take its course. But eventually, we saw some very positive signs, and that was just so amazingly exciting. Then, of course, you start to think, okay, how can I quickly get Megan and Patrick on it? Because I was an executive of the company developing the drug, hospital review boards were not comfortable with my kids being in a clinical study. So I made it easy for them. I quit my job. I remember the day the kids were first infused. I got to press the infusion button to start Megan's infusion. Eileen got to press Patrick's. We hadn't seen her smile in, in two years. After the first couple of months, we started to notice that she was smiling again. So that was the first sign to me that there's some hope. And then we went for the 12 week review. And I remember telling Megan, this means, Megan, that your heart's getting better. And it means you're gonna live to be an old, an old lady. And then um, she looked at me and kind of gave me a thumbs up and just threw her arm around me and, and said, thank you. So that's the house on the left, Megan, right there. That green one with the tents around it. Hey guys, what's up? We just want to introduce up, our real Megan and Patrick and John Jr. that are here today. John is a remarkable person. It's the power of his love for his kids to overcome extraordinary difficult circumstances. John's the kind of guy who said no, no is not acceptable. I'm gonna find a way to turn no into a maybe and then maybe into yes. People always say, how do you do it? I'm like, how do you do it? How do you not? I think most people in this position would do what they could to make their kids happy. I think I did my job. As a dad, I did what I had to do. And I don't think that makes you a hero. Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. I think I'm more than honored today to have a beautiful man, John Crowley, with me. Monsignor, thank you. Great to be here. John, it's uh, wonderful. You know, you, uh, we've known each other a little while from St. Paul's, and uh, we've talked about a few things, and uh, now it's a, it's a blessing to have you with us on the Catholic Corner again. 
You know, you met John and Aileen, his wife, in the opening video. You know a little bit about their story and the quest they had to save the lives of two of their children, Megan and Patrick. To say it's an extraordinary story of love, I think, kind of almost makes it small talk. So extraordinary that a major motion picture was made inspired by John's story, his relentlessness to uh, help develop a life-saving drug for his little daughter and son. You may have heard of it. It's titled Extraordinary Measures, starring Harrison Ford, Brandon Frazier, Kerry Russell. John's also the author of a marvelous book, Chasing Miracles, a personal memoir of his fight to save his children. As I mentioned, there are parishioners in our parish, St. Paul's in Princeton. Um, John's going to tell us a little bit more about their story, how their faith strengthened them and uh, was part of their quest, and the, talk about the difficult times that they went through and never, never, never giving up hope. John, welcome. Thank you, Monsignor. You know, before I kind of get in a little conversation with you, you, I'd like to just read the dedication in your book. That this book is dedicated to my children, to John Jr., who has my life, Megan, who has my soul, and Patrick, who has my heart, and to the mother of my wife, Eileen, who shares my life and my heart and my soul in every way imaginable. I don't know if that could ever, ever be said more beautifully and, and more manly. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, for us, it, for me, it just sums up everything sure. I think I've learned sure. over the years and through it all. Um, you know, people have described it as our family story, my story, Eileen's story, and, and it's really not. It's about John, Megan, and Patrick, and Eileen, and they really are the heroes. Yeah, I guess I would say they're the heroes. You know, I guess when I, when I think of you and talk to you a little bit and see you... Um, Sort of like I guess we talked a little bit last Sunday in church, you know, the fact yeah. that God says, uh, I am, so you are. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> guess what? Right, yes. exactly. And because we are, we're meant to be, and, uh, and we do what we have to do. Um, would you like to say, uh, uh, what are some of the most difficult times, you know, uh, uh, I can imagine, I can only imagine, as a, as a man, you know, what it's like to be a father of uh, youngsters and youngsters that need some help and, uh, and uh, even some things that touch my life when you say, well, you, you know, we, we looked and see our eyes. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, you know, I think we've had 12 years now, 12 and a half years since the kids were first diagnosed, diagnosed with this Pompeii disease and, you know, again, first hearing from doctors that there's nothing that can be done. I think that's the worst thing anybody could ever hear in a physician's office is your kids are going to die and there's nothing we can do. And you do go through all the emotions, the shock and the grief and denial. And for us, you know, we very quickly settled on determination to do whatever we could to change that. And I, you know, Monsignor, I don't know that we ever thought that we could. We just wanted to try. And I didn't want to have regrets years or decades from then. Eileen and I didn't want to think, God, I wished we had done this or I wished we had tried something else. Um, so for us, I think that was really part of the learning in the early days, and that was tough. It's tough to try to settle on, you know, what are you going to do about it all? How do you do that? And then also step back and take the time to enjoy it all. And I think, you know, even as I wrote Chasing Miracles, and, and Eileen and I were thinking through all of it together and all the lessons learned and the vignettes, and we realized we've, we've learned more about life and love and living from our kids than we've ever taught them without them ever knowing that they've been teaching us along the way. And that's a really neat lesson. And, and even in picking the title for the book, Chasing Miracles, for us, that has a really special double meaning. On the one hand, yes, it's chasing the miracles of newer and better treatments and cures to keep Megan and Patrick healthy and strong. But it's also realizing, and it, and it took us a while, took me a while, this is, was a really hard part for me to realize that, you know, it's what God has given us. And, and Megan and Patrick are our little miracles. And they are full of life. And they, don't, and they just want to be treated like regular kids, no better, no different. And, and that's a really, I think, special gift in it all. 
I guess I would just think the miracle of love itself. You know, if only everyone could understand what love really, really means and, and what it does for a, a, us in, in life and how the, how the love really embraces us and, and uh, whether it's God's love for us or your love and, and, and Aileen's love and the children, it's almost the same in a way, to me anyway. Yeah, I think, you know, you realize too that it's the, the, the gift of time that's such an important element of love. And at the end of the day, no matter what we're doing or what we're fighting for, really what we're trying to do is find time, time with each other and time with the ones we love. Yeah. And try to cherish it and celebrate it and, and have fun and laugh a heck of a lot too. I, I know our faith means something to us, but I think everybody's faith means something. I, 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 I always wonder about someone who says, well, I don't really have any faith in future or whatever, whatever. Um, but you and, and, and Eileen's faith had to have a, a tremendous impact on, on your decisions and your feelings and your, 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 your wanting to do more. It, it is. It's an important part of our lives. You know, we both uh, grew up in, in strong Catholic families and went to Catholic schools and colleges. And there were times where the f faith was incredibly important to us, um, but it became harder sometimes. I think you know, when you first get the shock of a diagnosis, you know, the first thing you do is, you, you know, you, you pray and you go to church and God, please help us. God, please make it different. Please help the kids. And, and you keep praying. And then as time goes on, I don't know, I think without even thinking about it, sometimes you just wonder, you know, gee, I've been praying a long time and things aren't getting better. I, you know, maybe I should do something else. And, uh, and you struggle with your faith. And for us, over time, I think it made us stronger as a couple, but not without a lot of challenges. And ultimately, I think stronger in our faith and to realize all the gifts that we do have and to appreciate them. And again, that whole notion of just finding another day. Another day to find more love and to find the love uh, in somewhat of a, of a deeper way. I, uh, I, I sometimes used to think of the Lord himself and, uh, and how we celebrate, I, if that's the right word to use, you know, the stations of the cross during Lent and things, you know, that he sure, fell yeah. and he got up and he fell and he got up and he fell and he got up. And I know myself at times, I, I, I've always looked at that and said, you know, sometimes you fall, but you got to get up. Yeah, that's probably the best example <laughs> ever of determination. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you're in your book, Chasing Miracles, you say that uh, people tell you all the time, God must have picked you and Aileen to be the parents of Megan and Patrick because you have the patience and the resources. And what do you say to that? I, you know, I don't know, Muncie. I don't know that God chooses yeah. people in such a way. One thing I've learned in working with a lot of scientists and is, you know, nature is, is not cruel, just brutally random. And then I think taking it back to our faith and our family and our beliefs, you know, when we pray, we pray for strength and grace and inspiration and uh, I think, you know, Megan and Patrick were born for whatever reason as they were in our job as parents. I, I think in a way that any parent would try to do is, is to make it better for them. And I, you know, my dad was a cop growing up, so we didn't have a lot of family resources, but what we lacked in those types of resources, I think we made up for in determination to, to try to make a difference. Yeah, and I also think that um you know, you can have all the money in the world, you can't buy love. I say this all the time, you can't go down to the mall and say, give me a thousand dollars worth of love, you know? It's, it's, no. And yet when you have it and you see it in, in, in yourselves and the children and, and, um, and so many little ways that become gigantic mountains of love almost. Just, yeah, it's uh, that ultimate intangible in life. You know, that, uh, that does it for us. Um, so you and Eileen struggle, and you made a great big decision to leave uh, the work you were doing and start something new just to see how much hope you can bring and how much love you can bring. And, and, uh, and, and, and like you said, even if it's, and I say that, even if it's not my child, it's going to be another child. It's got to be something else that's going to continue to make this. And I think that's what we're all really about, to, to take the skills we have or the gifts we have and see how do we make it. How do we make it just even grow, uh, grow some more? Um, you know, I often wondered when I was a kid, even in high school, when the 
you know, the, the priest would read these things to us and say, well, you know, if you had the faith to move mountains, you can move the mountain. And you kind of say, well, yeah, but, you know. And yet, no, there's some, there's some truth in all that, 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 that when we do have the faith in each other and the support of each other, somehow that mountain budges, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, there, there is. If you look at, at the end of even the movie they made about our family, at the very end, it replicates a very true scene in life when Megan, after about six months or so of getting her medicine, was feeling so much better and stronger. And I had this old convertible, and I dusted off her car seat, and I put her in it, and I didn't even tell Eileen, and we just started going down the driveway for the first time in years. She could sit up in a car and go for a ride, something pretty simple. And and that's how the movie ends, and they show us driving away, just as we did in real life, with Eileen taking a picture as we're going down the driveway. And it ends with the, the beautiful Eric Clapton song, Change the World. It's a wonderful song, and you know we, we didn't change the world. We never set out to, but we changed a tiny little part of it that, for our family and a few other people, meant all the world. And you know I think you end up with millions or billions of people putting their little dents in the universe, you really can change the world. Sure. And when you think about it, John, as, as uh, you know, you've traveled a little, I know I've traveled a little bit, and, and yeah. what I've always found is, uh, you know, there are men and women all over the world, like you and Aileen, maybe, maybe not always to the resourcefulness that you two had, but, you know, I've always said kids are kids, men are men, women are women, and they all love, they all love their children, they all love, and if only we could capture that and and put that maybe in a, in a test tube, so to speak, you know. Yeah, so many common elements of humanity and, and, par so and parenthood. And yeah. we've met kids with Pompeii disease literally all over the world and their parents, and they all think the same as we do and they have the same wishes for their kids. Um, How did the idea come about? I mean, when you're just sitting there one day and said, hey, I, mean, I, got, this, I got this thought. Uh, yeah, no, we were working with some researchers, uh -huh. and uh, one of whom was a brilliant scientist, and he was trying to get his work funded and trying to put a company together, and I was trying to help him recruit a, a business person to run it for him, and we couldn't. It was a small little company with limited resources in the middle of nowhere in, in, in Oklahoma, and finally, at uh, late one night, he said, uh, well, heck, why don't you just come out and run it, and that, the next day, I flew out on a plane, and we talked about it, and that was uh, about 11 years ago. I was about 32 years old, and we decided, I think like a lot of small business people, to take a chance and you know, to become an entrepreneur. I never thought I would be, but you, know, you decide that that's what you really want to do, and you want to be passionate about it and put everything you can into it. Is that the hand of God, that you, uh, you, you would meet someone who... Uh who's working on some kind of a scientific... Uh, <laughs> he, he, he certainly had the biggest hand in the lot, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, it's funny, there's part of me that sometimes thinks that, and this is just human, human yeah, minds yeah. talking, but that God really is up there kind of pushing you here, pushing you there, and, and on the other hand, sometimes I say, you know, maybe God just lets it all unfold, knowing that there'd be uh, some who would... Uh, who would pick up the ball and run with it, you know? Yeah, and I can't pretend to know which, uh, which, which category is which. <laughs> any of this falls into. The, uh, the movie was in the theaters, e Extraordinary mm -hmm. Measures. Is it now available on DVD? Is it available it is. for folks to... Uh, it is. Yeah, they can get it um, on, on DVD, Extraordinary Measures. Uh-huh. And uh, successful so far? You've been pleased with... It, with yeah, the, they did a really nice job. I think, you know, we were really hesitant at first to have a, a, a motion picture made about our family. It actually came about because of a front page Wall Street Journal story that appeared in August of uh, 2003 that many people read, including an actor named Harrison Ford. And he called some producers who had made Aaron Brockovich. They were making the World Trade Center movie. And uh, he said, gee, we should probably think about making a movie about this family. And it took us the better part of a year to get comfortable with that because uh, I didn't know, again, my dad being a cop and my mom in and, sure. and an Italian family in, in North Jersey, we didn't know anything about Hollywood. Um, but once we met the people and we heard what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it, we trusted them. And for us, it was a really positive experience. It was a great, great way, I think, to tell our family's story or journey, but in, in many ways, it could be the same journey that you know, millions of people have taken in a lot of different ways. And different ways of different diseases, you know, I... I, I, I Almost any adversity in life, Monsignor, health-wise or, or not, and the things you struggle with personally, professionally, in your marriage, in your family, and, you know, and how do you faith. be a, 
your faith, absolutely, absolutely. Let's, if we can, John, take a look at a trailer for the movie, which, um, which stars sure. Harrison Ford and Brandon Frazier, uh, who plays yourself in the Brendan movie. Brandon plays me, yeah, yeah. God, that's terrific. Both kids, it's a heart that's the real threat to their lives. How much more time do we have? Megan, maybe a year. Patrick, less. I wish that we had a drug to treat Pompeii, but we simply don't. I'm sorry. Dr. Stonehill. Yeah. This is John Crowley. All the researchers out there say that if you're a genius on the verge of a scientific breakthrough. I'm not on the verge of anything. How much would it take to prove your theory? The odds against you are crushing, but where does that leave your kids when the dad has no job and no health insurance? You're right. This is crazy. But I can't just sit around and wait for my kids to die. I promised them that we'd raise 500. That's all? 1,000. Is it 500 or 1,000? 500,000. Are you totally insane? Apparently. Is he worth it, a Stonehill guy? He's really eccentric, but his science is way ahead of everybody else's. Do you have a wife? Um, uh, ex-wives. Two of them. Yeah? How come? Because I'm so easy to get along with. Figure any dude in a business suit can help me raise venture capital and run the company. But who's going to be half as motivated as a dad who's trying to save his own kids? When my dreams are over and my feet we can do this. We push ourselves. We work around the clock. I already work around the clock. Great. Cure diseases in theory, but never help a single human being in reality. Can't cure your kids, you know that, but I think I can save their lives. What if he succeeds too late? Then what? You're in clinical trials by the end of the year, or we pull the plug. Nobody is going to tell me how to run my lab. We're out of time. Are you crazy? You jeopardized your chances of ever getting your kids treated. Do you remember you told me that I should stop chasing miracles? Well, don't get your hopes up, kid. It's a Hail Mary. Not gonna kiss me, is he? I will restrain him. Wow. <laughs> John, is there any favorite <laughs> scene, uh, part of it that was uh, you know, they, they did such a beautiful job, Monsignor, at capturing our family spirit and dynamic and the interaction with the kids. That All those scenes were special. Um, th there was one scene that, that replicated uh, a business meeting we had, but it was a kind of a unique meeting where I was struggling at the larger biotech company, the pharmaceutical company I was at, um, trying to move things along and trying to bring a different patient, very personal perspective to it. And I had made the decision to bring a number of families living with children with Pompeii disease up to the corporate headquarters and to talk to the whole company. And it was the first and only time in, in real life, I guess, that I, that I had Eileen and my daughter Megan come up. And Eileen was one of the speakers. And they recreated that scene beautifully in, in the film with the actors and different families. And when, when they scanned, uh, in, in the movie you can see, as they scanned the audience and the actors who play all the researchers and corporate executives, uh, woven between them were a, a, about a half a dozen or a dozen or so kids in wheelchairs, on ventilators, but they weren't actors. They were real kids living with a range of different muscular dystrophies, and it captured just so beautifully well, I think, that the personal and professional challenges that we went through. It was a really, they did a really nice job with that scene. That, um, are there moments that when you're, I don't know, in your quiet time, uh, well, I don't know how much <laughs> you're quiet. assuming I'm having quiet time, well, right? With three I, well, kids and two Jack Russells you know, at the house. But I was just kind of wondering the times when you, you know, you, you ever just think back at some of the scenes and kind of just thank God, or, or almost feel that there's the hand of God in certain scenes that, like the one you just described. Yeah, I think you know. There's actually a nice scene where um, Brendan, playing me, is talking to the researcher, played by Harrison, and. He or I was very frustrated that things weren't moving, that I just couldn't get Megan and Patrick treated, the research wasn't going fast enough. And in that scene, Brendan says, 
you know, what have I done? I've traveled the world. I've wasted so much time chasing miracles. And uh, I think that captured my personal frustration and emotion, and it also gave me the inspiration for the title of our book. What do you hope that people who watch the movie, read the book, uh, will walk away with from your story? Well, I think to realize that, that what's depicted in the movie is one family's journey, but again, that it could be you know, so many different families, whether it's with a ch child with a genetic disease or a wife with cancer or whatever it may be, so many different health challenges and, and how far you really can push science and push the system, sometimes not in time, sometimes not far enough, but you can make a difference. And I think a broader lesson about trying to make a little bit of a difference in the world for, for your family, for your community, for whatever is important to you. Uh, and for us, it was, it was for our kids. And you know, you realize, I guess, that when you get to my age too, you think back at how life was. Um, I mean, a, a, a very dear friend of mine that, that I was in high school and college with, a uh, great, great athlete, got polio. Mm. And I still remember him in, a, in an iron lung, and, yeah. and hopefully, uh, you know, some of those advances are, are way past that now, so that you know, we just hope for the future for lots of things. Now. You do, and look at the polio example. You know, so many thousands, tens of thousands of researchers made a difference, but there was one guy, right. Jonas Salk, right. who had the vision to right. drive a medicine right. to basically eradicate polio. Right, and and uh, and there's a there's there's a there is a John and, a, and an Eileen and somewhere out there there's another John there's millions another of Eileen, Johns and, and Eileen and that's what's yeah. so so beautiful you, you must have gotten lots of responses from you know uh, uh, people have either seen it uh, the book uh, read the book seen the, some of the responses that you might want to share with us yeah it's been, I mean I you know especially now that it's on DVD and people can see it in their homes um, I, I probably hear from dozens of families a week who see the movie, who are dealing with a health challenge, who just want to talk, who want to talk about the specifics of a clinical trial, or the kids were just diagnosed. Um, I was down in Florida a few weeks ago giving a talk at a rehabilitation hospital, people with uh, spinal cord injuries and brain injuries, really, people, incredibly brave people. So just so many things that just keep growing and growing. So many John, different thank ways. You. Thank, so, you so thank you so very, very, very much. Thank you. If you like more information about John's story, please go to the family's website, CrowleyFamily5.com. A beautiful man, a beautiful wife, beautiful children. Bless you. Thank you. John, I can't tell you, honest, I can't tell you.